What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, I'm going to be throwing some tips and tricks for when you're building your V-Pin. All right, so we're going to like the tips and tricks now as far as wiring. Definitely want to start off with the inside of the cabinet. I'm going to show you guys the back box. Again, people see this, they're like, whoa. I'm out. That's why I want to build this for customers. That's my main focus. Again, you're going to see a couple of tips and tricks that I have for the the wiring. Again, depending on how many toys you want, it will be a, a it's going to be a mess no matter what. I personally took my time wiring this and this to me is the cleanest I could get. This is the neatest I'm going to be able to get. I even did a couple of things as far as adding Molex connectors. Cause in this instance, this back box is going to be fully detached off. And basically I did a Molex connector to just wire in or connect some of the wiring that's here. So now real quick, what I was saying here, if you're looking at building your own cabinet, definitely you want airflow. I have all these bringing air in, nothing really pushing air out. It's, it's just more of a circulation thing. This is just pushing air in on uh, my personal pin. I have this one sucking air out which you could do, but in all honesty, with this setup, I did three air intakes. I have an LED strip just for back glow because customer is going to put this against the wall, so why not? The big thing to notice here is that I added, compared to my personal uh, pin, I just had like a, a an LED, like, like a strip like this with like a wire to plug it in just coming out of the leg. This one, I did it very nice and neat with the three prong kind of connect with the switch. So if I hit this switch, I gave power to the cabinet, but the computer is still off. Again, on my personal pin, when I push the power button for the computer, these turned on. Again, I was using an MSI motherboard. This with the Dell pre-built, I, I couldn't do it. There was no way. I kept getting errors on the Dell. You could message me on how I could have done it, but this is just fine. Basically now, there is air always coming into the cabinet, if you think of it like that. And the one thing I do also suggest, and I'm going to explain it, this right here, people are looking at this. This is my night mode switch for Dolph Link, so he could turn off night mode with the flick of a switch. That's definitely a must. You definitely want your air intakes. You definitely want circulation for the cabinet. And this right here is just clean. This is so much cleaner to do this. Instead, on my personal pin, I had literally the strip, like a power strip, six, six output, six port power strip. And then I had like a six foot wire coming out of the cabinet. Again, that was my personal pin. That's how it would be for others. Not gonna lie, you're gonna see this one little hiccup I did here. I thought I thought I could start this here, but I actually hit the metal bracket that's inside the cabinet. So a couple of battle wounds, but nothing too, nothing on the outside, just kind of hidden in the back. So now some people do notice the rails that I use. This is not real pinball rails. The only big thing is again, it's three quarter inch on this specific build and all my builds, it's birch. This is actually a white laminate birch. Check this out. So it's got like this white laminate, but again, it is real wood birch that is being used for this specific cabinet. My personal cabinet was using MDF, but on this one, I found a white laminate birch. Really cool, really clean, especially when it came to applying the graphics. I didn't have to sand anything down. So the big thing is keep in mind that yes, the original wood is three quarters. Then you also have a little bit of a gap for the actual TV. So with this, I believe this is inch, one inch? Yeah, it's one inch. Three quarters is the wood. I used one inch kind of railing. It's chrome railing with holes on one side. For some reason, it's kind of difficult to find this. You can't find this in Home Depot. I have to actually go to like a hardware store by me to get this. So it is pretty clean. I like the chrome finish on it. It's very slick, very clean. No, it is not real pinball rails. If you want a real pinball rails, they cost money that you have to just pay extra for. But the biggest thing that people saw in my last video is that they were worried about this, the edging. They thought it was too sharp. It might cut a finger. No, I actually took a buffer to this and grind it down the actual edging. So resting your hand here, it doesn't hurt. Same thing with the front. I don't do any lock bars because I don't know how big of a lock bar you need. But the biggest thing is that I definitely want to cover the actual TV. 
as you can see there, like the TV, it, you don't even see the edging on this. And all honesty, this table, when I do deliver it, it's gonna go over a little bit because you do see the edging of the TV here. Again, there are builders that I saw and I laughed. He literally had like this. Like you could see the gap and I'm like, oh, you're gonna resell that? That doesn't look good at all. So, you know, every little detail counts. Same thing here again with this edging. Again, it is not a sharp corner. I basically buffer it and smooth it and resting my hands here doesn't hurt. This is fine. I do get that question a lot. People are like, whoa, Vic, what are you doing with that angle that's gonna hurt? No, you just gotta sand it down. You can't beat, for example, you're gonna, like I believe it was $75 in total in just Chrome. Whereas like just pinball side rails alone are like 120 bucks, not including the lockdown bar. So there you go, keep that in mind if you wanna save money. One quick thing to note, cause some people do ask it, glass. This, I personally use Plexi. From Lowe's, this is like the Optiplex, Optiplex, Plexiglass. So I have Plexiglass on the play field itself. And for my back box, I do have Plexiglass here. I have to add two magnets for the corner so it stays up against it. But yes, this is actually Plexiglass hiding all the wiring and stuff here. So Plexiglass is pretty good. Me personally, when I get my um, CNC machine, I do want to make, you know, hardwood CNC. The biggest challenge though, again, the difference from my builds to other people's builds is that I do have flashers and strobes here. So I kind of want to do a full grill. So the flashers and the strobes are better seen and visible. Right now it is spray painted black with one coat, only one coat. This way you could still see through. And um, you know, for the next literation, I, I do want like, you know, I want it to be a little bit more better and more visible. Now, if you saw my first pin, this is new. I actually spray painted the top to hide the white LED fans that are in the back here. So on my personal pin, I do see the white LED fans. The TV is literally here, it ends here. So you do have about, I would say it's a good half inch. It's a good half inch gap. So what I did is that I actually painted the back of the plexiglass here to hide the white fans. So just to show you, that's the plexi. That is the paint. It's really spray painted a good like inch and a quarter. But that's because this plexiglass goes underneath the actual back box. About, I would say, a half an inch to keep it secure. But you could see where the table ends. I'll turn it on for you real quick. You would have seen the white fans on that. So now quick, I wanna go into the toys on this cabinet and what makes this the limited edition cabinet. Again, like I was mentioning before about other builders and all that, I noticed while, when I was building this cabinet and my cabinet, I was like, damn, the wiring. Once I open this up, you're gonna be like, whoa, the wiring on this is just insane. Especially even if you just look at the back box alone, the wiring is just, it's in depth, but there are a lot of toys. Keep in mind, I believe I said in my last video, there's 17 flashers 17 LED automotive style flashers on this. So 17, that means 17 separate devices need to be connected to the LED whiz. It's a lot when it comes to wiring. So the big thing I do wanna show because some people don't really understand what I mean by RGB flashers and the strobes and the beacon. So in the software, I do have an area for this LED, new LED tester. Basically it, it, it hits off 32 input the outputs that are on the LED whiz. So I do use this to test. Again, my builds have 10 solenoids. When you take this off and I take the screen off, you will physically see the 10, but there's three up top, three in the middle, and then four in the front. Two flippers and the two bumpers that's in the front. So that's 10 solenoids in total. Now what's cool about the software is that I could come here and I could click on a input and test. So the first 10 are just solenoids. Let's go into 11 through 20 basically. So if I do 11, 11 is the beacons. Okay, so I could come here and I could basically test the beacons. 12 are my strobes. So let's do the strobes first. So this is strobes. Let's take a look at how many strobes are here. So I do have one, 
two. I'm gonna go underneath the cabinet now. We could see here, I'm not even sure how many I have here. I'm gonna have to go underneath just to see. So I got two up top in the back box. Three, four, five, six. So there are six strobes alone. Again, not many builders do it like this. I personally, just like you could just see just the strobe lights going off. It's insane. The next one is even more crazy is 13 is the shaker motor. That's, yes. <laughs> Let's skip that. That's the shaker motor. So again, this is running a shaker. If I go to 14, it is the R channel in RGB flashers. Now again, RGB flashers, my automotive lights are these. It's a red and blue strip thing, LED automotive. So I'm gonna show you the bottom. Again, it looks like this, but it's got red and blue in it. So it is the red channel I'm, I'm going off now is red. But yes, the LED is red and blue. It's just a flasher. Let's take a look at how many red channels I have. So I have one on the top left. Again, I usually have that R, G, B. So that's R, so there's one, two. Underneath, we have one in the back left, that's three. I got one here, that's four. So what's cool about these automotive strips is that there's a yellow wire that will let you actually change the function of the strobe. So this one's just on. I might, I'm gonna change that to copy like that because it looks cool. So that one really you could set to strobe or you could just set it to on. Next is the G channel, G. So on the G, I got above the back box, middle, that's one, nothing where the DMD is. And then I got one on the bottom left corner. So there's two G channels, nothing else. Channel 16 is B, the B channel. Here we go. So in the B, I got one here. So again, it's separate, see? R, G, B, B. I got another B there. And underneath the cabinet, I got one in the back right. So now real quick, I reactivated the R channel because I realized that the R and the B channels are used a lot in tables. Not much the G, the green channel, but R and B are used a lot. So real quick to understand the wiring on this, okay? One channel, R. So LED Wiz has one input. And if you think about it, there is one, two, three, four wires that go to this one input. So there's a wire, one wire from here goes down to these kind of blocks, which I'm gonna talk about. And to the block, it also hits this bottom one here. So it's like one block, two lights. Then from here, it's a wire going down to another block, which then splits out to that one and the one in the back left. So there's a lot of wiring when it comes to this. That's why not many builders do what I'm doing. I just feel like it's got so much lighting and it just looks awesome. Some people might say, Vic, it's too much lighting or take out the strobe effect maybe leave it solid. I essentially could leave this just solid red, but I kind of like the whole strobing effect. Another thing to note is that depending on the table, some tables just like have R on for like a minute straight. Some just kind of flick them on and off depending on the action. That's kind of like I like, that's kind of why I like this. This is static on, but you could see it's doing different things. So on this LED automotive light, it's basically like, let's just say there's five modes, you know, just red flash, just blue flash, red and blue. It's, it's basically going through all the modes in this. That's why I like it. It's, it's the same thing up there. That's how it's set. So I kind of like how that looks. Cause again, some tables, the R channel will be on for a minute before it lets go. Mostly honestly, just like now with the tales of the Arabian nights, when you like start up with the genie that stays on for about, I would say 15 seconds. So it looks kind of weird just having like one, to me personally, it looks weird just having a bunch of things. Let's just say like the one red channel on for 10 seconds straight. Yes, that's what it's meant for, but you do have a lot of options when it comes to the LED automotive stuff. Then really the last three is underglow. So RGB is a channel. As you can see, it also links to my speakers. So again, same thing here. There is a brick 
for LED underglow red, I'm going to show you the bricks. Red, it goes out to the LED strip, and there's one that goes up to this brick here and then splits out to the speaker. So again, there is a reason for all this wiring. Next one is just the G channel. Now remember with LED strips, and the last one obviously is the B channel. If you do like green and the blue channel together, it makes it like aqua. So the software understands what to do. So if you do RGB together, it will give you a white. That's white now, see? So the software knows what to do and that's honestly what the LED Wiz tester looks like. So I'm real quick gonna fix this R channel here and I might as well take the screen out. Usually I do it with a microfiber cloth, but I have to put it in the box anyway. So some people have like their TVs mounted on like a hinge. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Yes, it's good to have, but me personally, I'd rather just take off the entire TV because uh, I use a lot of space. So all I do basically is I just push down on the TV edge here. So I push down and then up and then I go up with it and then I spit. So usually I leave the TV just like that. It's definitely secure. Luckily with the vinyl, like it's not going anywhere. I'll take you guys closer and I'll show you what I'm gonna do to fix this one kind of uh, LED, uh, automotive LED, so I could switch it to different kind of flash modes. So now this, yes, this will get, I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna bring you back and I'll show you the exact whole wiring. But basically I have it even marked in the cab R and there's a one black wire that's going right to it. I have everything kind of stable, nice and neat. So I'm just following this. Make sure I'm in frame. So following this one black wire, it's right here. So inside this black wire, there's basically three wires. There's a red, which is positive, black, which is your ground or negative, And then there's a yellow. So this yellow lets you change the modes. And basically you have to touch the yellow to a 12 volt positive, which I have here. These reds is 12 volt positive. So what I could basically do is, and again, I kind of have my wires heat shrinked. I could basically come here, put this inside and it will actually start changing the flasher, as you can see there. So again, there's many different modes. Uh, that's not too bad. That right now is one mode. It's just on off, on off, on off. So again, if I touch it again, let's see. Now you can see like that's just, that's the multi one. So you can see red, blue, that's multi. So that's like the first mode. I personally would rather leave it like that or I could just basically play around with it. So I could do it again. That's kind of red, blue, red, blue, flash, red, blue, red, blue. I like that one actually. That's not too bad. I'm gonna leave it like that. And that's really it. So all the automotive strobes are just like that. So now again, I still have my red channel active. So it's pretty cool. Almost every single one is doing something a little bit different. So pretty cool. I'm actually gonna turn off the PC now. And I usually do like to make sure my LED tester is off. Yep. LED test is off. I'm gonna turn off my PC. And I'm actually gonna put the TV in the box because I'm getting ready to deliver this. So I'm just gonna put it in the box. All right, now let's get to the real stuff, which is the inside of the cabinet. Now keep in mind with me, and like I was explaining before, 17 flashers. This is honestly the cleanest wiring you will, you will have. There's no other way to clean it up. We do have three different power supplies going on here. So I have 24 volts for my solenoids. You got 12 volts for basically all the LEDs and the shaker motor. And then you got the five volts for the LEDs, like the buttons and all that, and to power the LED whiz. But real quick, just looking at the cabinet. Again, this is the cleanest I could get, stapled up and everything. So the deal I made with this customer is that it took me a while because number one, I had to figure out how long is it gonna take me to wire this cabinet. And not to mention like my other personal cabinet, it is not this clean. So a lot of time went into really being sure to keep everything as clean as possible. Yes, it looks still like a wire's nest, but in all honesty, that is the cleanest 
I would ever be able to get it. Now you can see real quick, I did not decase the Dell. Really didn't save space if I decased it. The power supply is there. I didn't really save space. So I basically took the side panel off, but that is the Dell XPS. You can see the two RAM sticks that I put alongside the one stick that was there. You could see the 512 SSD here. You could see the 1660 Super and all that. Again, custom power switch wiring. If my camera focused, you could see it there. A lot of detail. Really, I started with mounting the power supplies and then from there, everything branched out. Again, just showing you the solenoid. So again, three at the top, three in the middle, and then the four. I always put my solenoid right against the flipper button so you can really feel it when you click. So one, two, three, and four. You can also see what I did with the speaker setup here. So this is the Logitech 533. I, de I, I decased that entirely, mounted it. I kept the dial here. The dial really was supposed to be underneath the cabinet like my personal machine is. But once I discovered Pinval, I no longer needed this. So basically this, I'm gonna hot glue this down so it doesn't move and I'm not gonna touch the dial here because it's already set and good to go. This is the subwoofer to the Z533. On this dial, you could basically control the sub, the bass. So I have it at a little bit. I'm personally not a fan of too much bass for the music. On the other side here, I have all audio, surround sound feedback with the 7.1 sound card. So front exciters, rear exciters. Again, I use these Dayton audios, not like the ones that I personally have. And in all honesty, these are perfect. The ones I have are the big pucks. I do not think you need that. Um, these are loud. These are perfect. I don't think you need to spend all that money. These are excellent. These are like held down with double edged tape and it's excellent. It's perfect. You don't have to really worry about that. So now real quick, we take a look at the LED Wiz and the same smart board. I have 23 outputs on my LED Wiz. So that's everything you see there. We hit 23 because there are four LED buttons out. So each wire base has to go to the LED Wiz. So Again, this is definitely the cleanest I could get. I always have my fuses in between on the main Sane Smart board. These are the high voltage ones. The other ones are just five volts. Um, definitely highly suggest you do always put the fuses. That's a must, I always suggest that. But the big thing when it comes to wiring, I highly suggest are these new blocks that I found. Um, they are called terminal blocks. Um, I was gonna use other types, which is one single piece of metal but these actually are very cool because you could put like the bar that I have here that came with it, or you could utilize it as one individual like breakout. So this has four uh, and this one here has six. Yeah, this has six. So you could basically like this one here is just for 12 volt positive. So this is one 12 volt wire coming in and then branching out basically six times. It's really 12 times because it's six on each side. So one 12 volt in, and then basically I'm, I have these going to the Sane Smart Board. So toys like the automotive strobes, the shaker motor, um, LED underglow. I'm trying to think of what else is 12 volts. Mostly that, it's mostly the LEDs, the strobes, the automotive strobes, the underglow is 12 volts, and the shaker motor. The other one here is 24 volts. That's for all my solenoids. So I have one 24 volt coming in and then it basically branches out to the same smart board. So I'm just showing you that this breakout thing I found definitely helps. For example, this one on the left is LED RGB. So I'm only using four, uh, three out of the four channels. This one here, I have it labeled here. This is running strobe and RGB flasher strobe bgr flasher so rgb flashers along with the strobes so if you think about it as you saw how my under table is like this r i have the uh, the r in going to the actual physical strobe and then the r on the opposite side is going to the same smart board that's how i utilize those bricks also you can think of it as this i have one r going out to here and as you can see here i have beacon strobe 
RGB, negative 12 volt. That right there, RGB is for the flashers. This small one here, I have my LED underglow RGB for this one here. So again, definitely finding these um, pucks on Amazon, definitely a big saver. Check this one out. This one is 12 volt negative. So I have one wire. It actually starts here because it's a 12 volt negative here. So one wire from here goes down to the negative of the power supply. But then from here, it branches out a negative up there. And I also have a 12 volt negative here. So instead of running two wires down, I ran one wire up and then it branches out to the back box itself. Again, it just, it these, these like blocks definitely saved me a lot. Again, you could see it here. For example, this one here, it's just connected. This is one piece of metal here, but they do give you an add on if you wanted to make all these connected to one, basically a jumper cable, if you think of it. So here's one in the box, as you can see out very thick. I mean, you could probably put 18 gauge, even a little bit bigger. And there is the breakout. And what's cool about these breakouts, you could actually break it. If you only want two, you could actually bend this and break it. And this right here was a very big lifesaver. Again, I was looking at single. They have one single like metal bar, but this was cheaper and honestly much better. I was able to utilize this. So this is a prime example right here on this one is I'm basically using two, four, I'm using all six channels here. And again, one channel up top here is 12 volt negative. The next one is strobe. I could read my notes here. So strobe, 12 volt positive, and then RGB for my LED. So you could even see it here, this white wire that is going to my custom LED ring on the speaker, RGB. Again, to some people, this might be nauseating. This might be a disaster. You might freak out, but in all honesty, everything needs to be wired. And this is the cleanest I could get as far as wiring. Again, try to keep it down, staple down a lot of, you know, staples to make sure these wires don't move in transit. Now, real quick, another big thing, I always use my analog plunger. You can see how it is there with the zip tie and all that. But I want to make a big deal about this. The KLZ board. Oh man, it is a must to put this board in front, right along the cabinet. My original cab, I had it in the back, huge mistake. Nudging now on this is beautiful. I highly recommend that you put your KLZ board right up against the front. Another big tip, as you see, I did add a shaker motor to this. This is a real stern shaker. It comes with like a board and stuff that was all garbage. You just need the shaker. And as you can see here, I have my diode along with the knob I was talking about in my other video to control the speed. So definitely, if you're looking at a shaker motor, you'll want to add that dial to control the speed because this thing shakes. With that in mind about the shaker motor, let me go back to the KLZ board. Thanks to somebody on the Facebook forums, I copied this, amazing. The KLZ board is actually sitting on top of a quadcopter kind of gimbal setup, basically an anti-vibration plate, a must. Again, quadcopter anti-vibration. So when that thing goes, the nudge doesn't go crazy. It basically absorbs it. You can see it, it's literally levitating. It is levitating and sitting on that shock absorber. If you watched my last video, my first videos of V-Pin, all the wiring is done the same. 12 volts go to the shaker motor. So same thing here. That's why these breakouts are great. In my personal build, there's like, I have four wires with the wire nut. This basically is my wire nut. It's much cleaner doing it this way. But other than that, you can even take a look real quick at the Dell. There's three video cables coming out. The only big thing is that the Dell has HDMI, display port, and then it had like this very long, I think it was like a DVI input. So I did DVI to HDMI for that. Got my USBs in. I also added on this build dual extender USBs. So you could basically add a hard drive underneath for quick access. You could see my power button there. And uh, honestly, that was the only other addition. Now, if you've been doing your research on V-Pin, the big thing about me, my setup with the LED Wiz and the Sane Smart, Pinscape software, I cannot use night mode from Pinscape software. It doesn't communicate with the LED Wiz. So basically, the way I have this night mode switch here, 
The way that knife mode switch works is basically a regular toggle switch that goes to the ground on my LED Wiz. I have to do it that way. Because I'm not using the LED Wiz, or really I should say, the Pinscape has the outputs or the pinouts through the KLZ board to go to the solenoids. I don't set up that way. I do KLZ board is strictly for inputs and nudge and analog. LED Wiz is for my toys. So because Pinscape cannot talk to the LED Wiz like that, you just have to give a toggle switch, a physical switch. If I was wiring everything through the KLZ, it, the night mode would work correctly. But in my case, I cannot utilize that feature. I had to use an actual toggle switch. That honestly is it guys. You guys could see how my, my first personal pin is. You could see it compared to this. This is the cleanest as far as wiring with all the toys I have, you will ever get. VigVP Game Case Arcades.